Good morning and welcome. We're still in the season of Easter, so may I wish you all the blessings of Easter, wherever you are. I'm the minister of Blowart Hill Church and interim moderator of St Columba Gaelic Church in Glasgow, Scotland. And by the way, we've just uploaded another Gaelic service to St Columba's website at www.highlandcathedral.org.uk. We're all facing tough times just now, and the church is here to support you through them. The current challenges are prompting us to do church differently, and I know I and many of my colleagues are seeing encouraging results from their webcasts as people look in from all over the world. Others, um, well, some churches have, have top-of-the-range equipment and they've got input from experts to, to get their services online. And there are others like mine um, that are a bit more homespun. So please excuse any technical shortcomings. This is definitely not the BBC. Do light a candle again tonight. And as you put it in your window, see a way prayer for everybody who's affected in any way by the COVID-19 pandemic. Remember to include yourself in that prayer. The candle reminds us that Jesus is the light of the world and he gives us hope and courage in these times. Thank you again to the young people of Blowart Hill for drawing your rainbow pictures. They're up in the windows of Blowart Hill Church for everybody to see as they pass. And today I'd like to give a shout out to the staff and volunteers at Glasgow Northwest Food Bank who are based at my church at Blowart Hill. During the emergency, they have been busier than ever and they're getting food parcels out to the most vulnerable people in our community. So well done, great work guys. And I'm chuffed that we got a mention in two separate articles in the new May edition of Life and Work magazine, the magazine of the Church of Scotland. And finally, if anybody wants to make an offering, you can go to the Blowart Hill website at www.blowarthillchurch.org. Click the donate button to take you to the donate page and then look for the yellow PayPal button. We don't expect you to make a donation if you're on reduced income or if your job has disappeared. But if you were used to putting in your offering to the plate on a Sunday, for example, and can no longer do this, then the donate button is a good way to keep your support going for your church for the next wee while. We do appreciate anything we get. Now, at the beginning of this service, let's draw together with God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, may we continue to know your Easter blessing as we worship you. Lord Jesus Christ, cheer us with your living presence, even in the midst of difficulty. Holy Spirit, help us to receive you this day and make us more open to receive the gifts that your indwelling makes possible. Holy God, the strength of those who believe, help us to have faith and through this time of worship, receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now, in these Sundays after Easter, we generally in the church take our readings from the resurrection appearances of Jesus, and today we're doing that from a reading from the Gospel according to John, chapter 20, reading verses 19 to 31. And I'm taking my reading from the New Living Translation. So it's John chapter 20 and reading there at verse 19. Let's hear the word of God. That Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hand and his side. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Again, he said, peace be with you. 
As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they remain unforgiven. One of the twelve disciples, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, was not with the others when Jesus came. They told him, We have seen the Lord. But he replied, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands, put my fingers into them and place my hand into the wound in his side. Eight days later the disciples were together again, and this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and look in my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. My Lord and my God, Thomas explain, exclaimed. Then Jesus told him, You believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. The disciples saw Jesus do many other miraculous signs in addition to the ones recorded in this book. But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in him you will have life by the power of his name. Amen and thanks be to God for this reading from his Holy Gospel. So I hope you're all managing to get through this extraordinary time of social isolation and having to stay indoors as much as possible. We've all got to know Professor Jason Leach recently as he stands alongside First Minister Nicola Sturgeon at many of her press conferences, delivering his no-nonsense advice about the coronavirus epidemic in his Lanarkshire accent. Son of a miner and a committed Christian, Professor Leach has become famous for his clear guidance during the crisis. Just yesterday he was telling us again that by far the most effective things we can all do are to stay at home and keep washing our hands. He said the most effective barrier to COVID-19 is your own front door. And with this advice clear in our minds, Every time we open our door, the thought should go through our mind, is my trip outside essential? Most of us, of course, already keep our outside doors locked. Certainly in the middle of Glasgow, we should. However, the present crisis has required us to fit another lock to our outside door, a mental lock. As well as turning the physical key, we now turn over that thought in our minds. Is my journey away from home essential? And only with both of those locks opened is it possible for us to go out. And we know the short list that might make it possible. Essential worker, not in a vulnerable group, daily exercise, important shopping, medical appointments. And that's about it. Now, it's a week since Easter. And the Bible tells us that story about what was happening a week after the first Easter. The story about Thomas, which I read just now. Doubting Thomas. It's a favourite subject of preachers. It's a story that helps us to explain what faith is, what faith means, and how it can often develop after a period of doubt or uncertainty. But preachers are influenced by the circumstances that are happening around them. Or they should be. If we don't take heed of where people really are, we'll not have much to say to them. And of course, where we all are these days is behind locked doors. Locked physically, and as I've suggested, locked mentally. Even though we observe the normal precautions to protect our property by turning that key, our situation is now far from normal. And so we have to apply that extra lock of self-discipline to preserve our own health and the health of others. So when I was 
reflecting on that familiar story about Thomas, my attention fell not on the activities of Thomas himself so much, but on those few descriptive words right at the beginning of the story that apply so very much to the times that we're all living in now. The disciples were meeting behind locked doors. And it immediately occurred to me there were similar things going on there to what are going on now. No doubt there was a physical lock on that door in the room they were meeting in, the disciples, some kind of bar perhaps. I, I don't know what the state of the technology was in those days. It doesn't really matter. Suffice to say there was a, a physical barrier to people getting in. And maybe that's proof enough that it wasn't just Thomas who was needing reassurance. All the disciples were concerned for their safety and were told that this was mostly because they feared the Jewish leaders. But do you know what? The disciples then, like us today, they had applied their own mental locks as well. What do I mean by that? Well, remember, this was a week after it had first been reported that Jesus had risen from the dead. And if the disciples already believed that to be true, then you could ask, what did they have to be afraid of? If those Jewish authorities, those Jewish powers, had no power over Jesus to the extent that Jesus could even come back from the dead after they'd crucified him, then what would the disciples have to fear either? Clearly, though, that's not where they were, either the first time they met together or the second time when Thomas was with them. If you take your attention away from Thomas, the, the named man in the story, uh, and you look at the locked doors instead, you can see that it wasn't just Thomas. They were, they were all doubting Thomases, if you like, if that makes sense. First and foremost, they'd locked their door. And that reminds us that the first Christian gathering took place in a house, somebody's home. There were no churches. And the doors were locked, just like ours are today. And second, they'd locked their minds. Of course, they were aware that Mary and Peter and John had seen the empty tomb and Mary had seen Jesus in the garden, at first confusing him for the gardener. John's already told that wee bit of the story. So we know all this had happened, but the disciples were still confused and uncertain about what all this meant. Clearly, they, were, they, 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 they just couldn't take on this normally impossible thought that Jesus was alive after he'd been so publicly put to death. Um, and then they see him for themselves. First of all, the ten of them, and then Thomas sees him as well. Of course, the form that Jesus takes on isn't quite that of his physical body the way he was before he was crucified. John's story really doesn't allow for that. John says quite clearly the doors of the room were locked. And in the normal way of things, human bodies can't get through locked doors. Door locks don't discriminate either. They keep everybody out, both unwelcome callers like the Jewish authorities and potentially welcome guests as well. We know that from our own experience today. There are lots of people that we would like to let through our locked doors and, and we just can't at this time. Uh, the locks aren't just there keeping out um, unwelcome guests, as they usually are. But let's get back to Jesus. He outlived the cross, he outlived the grave, and he took on a living resurrected form. He was there, he was there among the disciples, John tells us that, but he was not stopped by doors with locks or bars. And just as important, he wasn't stopped by mental locks either. And notice this, 
Jesus came among them and he wasn't angry that they'd let him down, his friends, as the disciples well might have expected he could have been. Jesus came among them in peace. His words to them were, peace be with you, shalom. So here Jesus comes not to confront his friends with their failures, but to confer his peace upon them. A blessing that connotes more than tranquility, but a deep and holistic sense of well-being, the kind of peace that the world cannot ever give. And then Jesus leaves them with a gift, a most wonderful gift, and he says to them, receive the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. Far from rebuking them, he confers part of the very nature of God upon them, to dwell with them. And so they could now go out into the world with a, a renewed confidence and they could speak with God's authority, representing Christ as the church has done ever since in such matters as assuring the world about God's forgiveness of sins. And this has got to be good news for us all. At a time when we live behind locked doors, physically and mentally, the Lord Jesus is fully able to not only get round the physical barriers and bring us his peace, but to overcome the mental ones as well and restore our confidence that we have his spirit inside us and we speak for him um, and, and confer his blessing to the world in turn. And we don't have to do anything. Jesus is alive. And so divine grace is alive and busily at work. We don't have to drop or overcome our own mental barriers to letting God in. He does that anyway. And when he does, we are forever changed. We see the world in a new light. We need no longer be afraid of any person. And we are empowered by the Spirit of God. We need no longer have fear of anything that the world can throw at us, from the greatest earthquake down to the smallest microbe. For Jesus has blessed us with his peace, and he's gifted us God's Holy Spirit meaning that the very power of God himself is inside us. Yes, we do have a lot to contend with these days. For some, the burden will be heavy indeed. For all, the demands are unprecedented. But look at what God has given us to ease our lives in these times. His peace and his Holy Spirit. And most certainly, a living Saviour. Stay strong and remember these words of Jesus. Blessed are those who haven't seen me and yet believe. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forevermore. Amen. Now, I invite you to join me as I pray this this joint prayer of the Scottish churches which has been released and it's on the Church of Scotland website but it's for this Sunday and it's agreed as a joint prayer by 13 of our Scottish denominations and churches and the prayer I think is is, is good for us today because it's built around this thought of Jesus bringing us his peace just like he brought the first disciples his peace. So let's join together in prayer. Let us pray. Living God, speak into the depths of our experience. Speak the word that stills our fears and calms our anxieties. Peace be with you. Speak your word to the lonely and to the broken, to the bereaved, and to those whose world has crumbled. Peace be with you. Faithful God, speak to us behind locked doors as we remember others who risk their own safety in order to serve others. 
peace be with them. Carers and nurses, doctors and ambulance drivers, delivery drivers and shop assistants, peace be with them. God who inspires hope, speak to us in the present and speak to us of the future. For though the doors are locked, in time they shall be open, peace shall be renewed. For those who lead the life of our nation, our Queen Elizabeth, First Minister and Prime Minister, and all who shape our common life, for us all, peace shall be renewed. God, whose name is love and whose gift is love, open our hearts to know you and to love you, to love you and to love our neighbour, and as we do, to hear again, peace be with you. May we find our strength in you, and hear again, peace be with you. In Jesus' name we offer this and all our prayers. Amen. Now, a wee hymn. The title of the hymn is, It is Well with My Soul. And the first verse starts, When peace like a river attendeth my way. The chorus is very simple. Do join in if you want. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my Lord you have taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul, it is well with my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul, my sin, oh the bliss of this glorious thought, my sin not in part but in whole, is nailed to the cross and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O oh my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. O Lord, haste the day when my faith shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. I invite you now to join me in saying the Lord's Prayer together. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever. Amen. Now may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, rest upon you and remain with you and all whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Find us on our Facebook page anytime or on our website at www.blorthillchurch.org. Goodbye and thank you for joining us.